Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, I'm going to start a video for you over here on the right, but before I do that, this particular follow on Twitter, SLE Farms, to be honest with you, is one of my favorites. Uh, they tend to produce just a lot of great content. And as you look over there, you can see um, this is a, in, a, in a region in Mato Grosso where we can see um, quite a bit of flooding here as of late. Now, the video is released on March the 2nd, and I tend to, tend to very much trust the content that comes from this particular follow on Twitter here. And uh, we can just see that in this part of Mato Grosso, a, a, a lot of flooding rain. And, of course, that planter there um, certainly stalled with all the moisture that's that's come here into this part. Now, I was looking back at some satellite-derived precipitation. And one of the problems in, that I have with getting great data out of South America is that there's not this ubiquitous coverage of either radar or rain gauges, so I tend to rely more on satellite. And you do notice that just looking back from February 24th through March the 3rd, there are pockets here that did receive uh, well in excess of six inches of rainfall, possibly even locally more. And this is a this is an issue with satellite. These are mostly this product is mostly made with polar orbiting satellites, not so in other words, they're not stationary with respect to the rotation of the Earth. So you tend to get snapshots and we try to stitch that together. Uh, as you come down into southern Brazil, it was drier. And then what we want to do next is we want to kind of take a look closely here at what was going on in Argentina. So let's do that. We're going to take just a quick stop at a few different stations. I'm going to start you with this station here, which is very close to Santa Fe, which is right in through this area. Now on satellite, you see some areas have been missed. And this particular station right about here is one of those areas where over the last month, we've not measured any precipitation at this particular station. Again, this is near Santa Fe. But as we go from there over toward Cordoba, which is right in this area, you can see a pretty sharp gradient here in precip as you move off to the west. And the idea is that uh, there have been at times better thunderstorms in this area. And you can see lately there have been a couple of events that have come through. It's not much. It's, it's 10 to 15 millimeters of rainfall, meaning that that area is still in a pretty substantial deficit here. Now, a lot of that deficit was built up during the dry season, but the rains as they came back in did not really alleviate that uh, during this time period. So we still see a pretty big deficit there. But I went just south and, and, uh, and west of there and, and found another station that's well, you can see has gotten much better rainfall. And uh, really beginning back in, in January, working through February, much more routine precipitation. So this is why we start to hear some of the numbers coming out of Argentina that due to, you know, I don't know, I like to use this term. I, I think that the, that the, the, the crop is freckled. <laughs> and what I mean by that is some places have gotten these rains and look fantastic, but others have not. And we just think specifically about Argentina. Uh, right now, just a report I received earlier this week, uh, the corn is 30% good to excellent. A year ago, it was almost 60%. Uh, beans are at 15% good to excellent, and last year they're about 64. So we're, uh, what's important is to do the comparison here. Uh, so you can just see that there are more regions that are um, not looking as good as they did a year ago. Now back up to Brazil, the harvest pace here with soybeans and the planting pace uh, of corn. The whole of the country of Brazil is about 15% behind last year on harvest pace. Uh, Mato Grosso is about 30%. Uh, and when it comes to the corn planting pace for the safrina corn in, in the north here, uh, we're about 35% off of, of what we were last year. So this is what's happened. The rains come on late in the north and they've been drier to the south. And that's given us some perspective of where we're going. Now, over the next week, we continue to see wetter than average conditions where we're trying to uh, harvest a crop from Paraná up to Mato Grosso and east and where we need to get a new crop in. And you notice that down in Argentina, it is going to be largely and widely scattered precipitation through the next week. Many places not receiving much at all. I'd like to show you it just briefly here. This is the this morning's uh, European model. We do have a low that's sitting just off the coast here. So throughout the day today, we could get some scattered precip, uh, uh, scattered storms on that area that I said was quite dry. But if we play this forward, sorry, let's step you back. You see that front sweeps through by the time we get to this evening and then into the overnight hours. But after that, if I just kind of let it slide, this is going into the weekend. I'm hoping you're keeping an eye on Argentina here. Into Sunday, into Monday, there's the possibility. Look at this front from this deep low. I mean, this is way south. But the front stretches into that area, possibly bringing some precip from Santa Fe over towards central Argentina, excuse me, Buenos Aires, over towards central Argentina and moving a bit north. So you see that slide through there but not much support for that as high pressure builds in. So what we're watching here is that after we get out pretty far in the forecast, now fully into week two, 
are the rains going to be returning? But before we get there, let's just at least look at how the precipitation compares to normal over the next week. So above average from Mato Grosso into Mato Grosso do Sol and Parana, uh, you know, this area here um, uh, getting quite a bit of heavy rainfall. But we are drier compared to average, and the temperatures are up. We've really spiked in temperatures down here as well, which is shown up on those weather station reports too. Okay. As we look between what we'll call day four through day 10, that's still not the big return of precipitation to the south here down in Argentina. It doesn't really come until you get out past day 10. So looking fully into week two, all right, this gets us out to the 19th, the models have shown, the ensemble models have shown, and they've waffled a bit on this, which we would expect, but they've shown a return of moisture to, to Argentina. Now, I could point to a lot of different teleconnections that are that would support this. The big changes in the Southern Oscillation Index, the changes that have happened with the Antarctic Oscillation or the Southern Annular Mode, depending on what you want to call it here. Uh, also, changes in transport uh, and also the, the flow of, of overall flow of the jet stream pattern. But the reality is that the models continue to bake in to that week of the 12th through the 19th, better precipitation for Argentina and drier conditions getting into farther to the north. Now, we're going to look at this, but remember, this is all going to come in as convection, right? There'll be storms here, so it's going to be scattered. But the models right now, the Europeans says that that week two time period, that's all you're looking at here, you know, the, the potential here for grabbing uh, better than an inch of rainfall, better than 30 millimeters does exist. I will just continue to tell you what we've observed so far is the fragmented nature of these thunderstorms means that there will be places that are missed. And so this is not going to be largely corrective on some of the issues that those regions have seen. Just when I wanted to make that point. But I'll finish up with one last map. It's the GFS. You know, I don't often show it uh, for South America. And there's I've got a lot of reasons for that. But I'll just make a point that there's better agreement right now between the GFS and the European as to what's happening down here. So all that I'm saying is that through the next week, we have to watch how this transitions to see if these rains do materialize. Because week two forecasts on the boundary between the tropics and the extra tropics can be quite challenging. So I think this is a very important factor to be watching here coming out of Argentina. We'll keep an eye on it. I'll report back to you on Monday next week. Thanks.